Okay, so I've had uh, FL Studio for about two weeks and um, I've actually owned the full version just for a few days and I've come up with this little track. So I thought I'd go through it and just to show you a few things that I've discovered. If you're like me, you uh, you are thinking or you have just changed from another door. I was a Reason user for many, many years, but I kept looking at FL Studio for the last month or so thinking, I don't know, it seems crazy, it seems really complicated. I don't think I'll ever get the hang of this. Um, I kept giving up and coming back to it and I suddenly realised how powerful it is and decided to go for the all plugins edition. So this is the all singing, all dancing version, if you like, it's got absolutely everything. And I've come up with this little track today and uh, so I thought you might be interested to see uh, what I've done with it and what I've discovered. What we're looking at here is the playlist, which is the kind of linear view with all the patterns laid out, just like a conventional door. And you can see I've used a piano, I've got some hi-hats, I've put some proper lead guitar and some picking guitar that I've actually played on a guitar that's not a synth. Some fretless bass, which I used the Trillion uh, bass plugin on. And I've used uh, a plugin called Portatron, which I only bought yesterday. It's by Robotic Bean. It's an absolutely amazing plugin, and I'll show you that. And down here we have the master volume, and you can see some automation. I'll run the full track at the end. Um, I'll just show you a few of the other uh, screens. Uh, if you hit F6 on your keyboard, you've got what we call the channel rack, and this is everything that's actually in the uh, project. And this is where you can route the tracks to the various uh, mix inputs. You can see one, two, three, five, five, both of these routed to five. It's a little bit weird. It took a bit of getting used to. With Reason and Logic, you create a, a new track and it's already routed. With this program, you have to route uh, the thing that you make to uh, an empty mixer channel. It's a bit like a, a real life kind of situation where you've got a mixer and you've got to plug your synthesizer into it. I quite like that. It took a bit of getting used to but I actually really like it. Um, so let's just go back to that channel rack and here you've got the step sequence over here and depending on what pattern you've got, let's just show you uh, if I've got anything. See there on the grand piano you can see if I click on that you'll see it goes to the piano roll for that pattern and obviously you can input um, you know, like things like this, just little 16th notes if you want to. Very easy to do. I won't go all through this because there are loads of videos about this on the net. And this isn't meant to be a tutorial, just a, a, an interest video. What else have we got here? We've got the uh, piano roll you've seen. We've got the mixer, which is brilliant, I have to say. And with the mixer, I've color coded and labeled all the uh, parts of the song and I've got a, a reverb here on Ascend. So if I just click this reverb over here, you can see I've got the fruity reverb on this channel and there it is and you can change all the settings. I don't particularly want to change them at the moment because I've got them right for my song. Um, so that's that. You've got the uh, browser over here where you can uh, find all your effects and all your plugins and uh, that's the information of the current project and you can literally just drag things from here straight into the mixer down here we have this uh, search bar so if I search for guitar all the guitars come up and I've got this acoustic guitar here and I can just drag this straight into an empty mixer channel and it's all set up ready to go and I can play that on my keyboard if I want I'll just undo that so yeah, that's really good. So that's the browser and there's lots of little sections to that. It's a really good way of getting things into your project quickly. If I press F8, this brings up every single plugin that I've got on my computer for FL Studio. Not the third party ones, but all the ones that come with it. And as you can see in this all plugins version, uh, there's an awful lot of them. On this side of the screen you've got all the synths in alphabetical order and over here you've got all the effects. It's a great way of finding what you want and you can narrow it down with these filters here. So for instance if I just show you the reverbs, delays and reverbs and just the distortions and just the compressors. That's actually a great way of finding your way around uh, all the filters, all the flanges. It's brilliant. Um, come out of that. Here's another really good thing. If I press Command and F8, this is everything I've used in the actual track that I've 
recorded the actual project. You've got all, you've got just the patterns, just the channels. What is brilliant about this is if you hover over one of them, like the piano, it plays what I recorded. There's the hi-hats. Here's the fretless bass. It's just a great touch, isn't it? I love that. With the mixer over here, you've got all the various slots you can put effects in 10 slots per mixer channel, which is very generous. If you look at this reverb here, of course you can see the fruity reverb that I put in. The master has got the uh, fruity limiter on it. I'll just click that, you'll see the limiter here. Um, you'll notice the routing. If I click the reverb here and I click, say, the grand piano, you can see that the grand piano is linked to the reverb and also linked to the master. You've just got to pretend this lead goes all the way through to the master. You only see the first bit of it. And how much of the piano you send to this reverb is on this rotary here. These yellow indicators here are to show that you've got uh, effects actually on those channels. So this guitar here, if I solo it by just uh, right clicking this and play, this has got the guitar tuner on it. So I can, when I plug my guitar in, I can uh, tune up and it's got the Guitar Rig 6 plugin, which is a native instruments plugin. Um, I mean, it's just great. The way it works is fantastic. It's very confusing at first if you're coming from a what I would call a straightforward door like Logic or Reason. So Reason uh, was my door of choice for many years. But this thing is just amazing and it's a lot of fun to use. Let's have a look at this Portatron. Uh, this is this plugin that I bought yesterday. So we'll go to the channel rack, F6, and just click it. And this is it. Now it's running automatically. I haven't recorded any MIDI notes. I'm simply running it along with the track. I'll just play it. And what I've done is I've just put a couple of my uh, splice loops in here. I've reversed one and played the other one forward. And uh, I mean, this is, I thought at first this was just a, a Porter studio um, in kind of, uh, virtual form but it actually isn't it's a sampler that you drop samples four samples up to four samples in and play them like a a, um, a tape recorder and uh, it's incredible it's got delay and reverb you can change the EQ the amount of drive you can change the tape speed you can put all kinds of things like uh, dropouts <laughs> noise <laughs> like hiss I mean, you know, it's pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, it's a really good little plug in that. I mean, there are lots of lovely little touches to this thing and I could be here forever showing them to you. For instance, the tempo up here, you can do all the usual thing like speed it up and slow it down by dragging. Here's a nice touch. Right click it and you have a list of 80, 90, 100 and just click on these and it'll go straight to those, which is a nice touch, isn't it? The metronome's there. I also bought the Novation FL Key 37, which I have to say is a brilliant thing to have with this piece of software. And it makes it even better um, for, uh, you know, accessing all the uh, the bits and pieces on the program. It's a great, uh, great piece of hardware. As I say, I could be here forever showing you stuff because there's so much to it. I mean, it's a very, very deep program. I did buy a tutorial on Udemy, which I have to say is equally as amazing as this piece of software itself. It's about 28 hours worth of uh, tutorials. I've, I've done about eight hours worth already and I've learnt tons and tons. There's lots of little contextual menus, for instance, on these regions here. If I click the piano keyboard, lots of things you can do here. and. There's a set of tools for the playlist. Here they all are. I could literally spend hours showing you this, but I don't want to bore you to death. The idea of this video is just a quick look round uh, and show you why I'm as excited as I am by this piece of software. So what I'm going to do, just to finish off, is to play the whole thing through and I'll just uh, click about, probably just going from the playlist to the mixer.
and it fades down and that's it. So that was just a very quick video on FL Studio 21. I think it's actually FL Studio 12, but I think they renamed it 20 when it went Mac because obviously it was a PC thing for years. It started life as Fruity Loops. That's what the FL stands for. And then it became FL, which sounds way cooler, obviously. FL Studio. And uh, it went to Mac, I think, a couple of years ago. Uh, hence FL 20. And now it's Mac and PC. There's a few things on the Mac you can't get that you can get on the PC, but nothing that, you know, it's going to worry you at all. And, uh, yeah, like I say, very, very pleased with it. I hope you found that interesting. If you've got any comments or you've got any questions, do get in touch via my uh, YouTube channel or via my website and the address is on your screen now. And um, I'm off to do some more work on my song.